Would you like some wine, Mr. Bob? Oh, do you like crab? That's a dead eel. I'm very glad the immortal poems of Mr. Bob, which I have the honor of reading to you, have earned your approval. You must publish your poetry. Mr. Mac pays like a real patron of the arts. And will you be able to leave your attic? You live in an attic. Blimey, too fat for poetry. I was shattered to find a man in such modest circumstances. As you know, I discovered our dear poet in my office. Your office will be famous as the cradle of this genius's worldwide reputation. Your health, Mr. Bob. I, I shall write an, an essay about you. Well, you remind me more of Walt Whitman, but you are more significant, as would I think. But you have the advantage of a greater indecency. You should travel. I'll publish your poems, paid for by my cinnamon logs that I float down the rivers. You're not interested in the publishing deal. Please don't drink so much, Mr. Bob. Mm. Perhaps, Mr. Bile, you could stop stroking my wife's arm. Her and she may turn into a heap of flesh without a face. So, is it unclean? When the pale, mild summer ebbs and they are swollen with love like sponges, they turn back into beasts, evil and childish. They and their bodies collapse and grow heavy unto death. They yield a small fruit. They spew out with pain what they once sucked in with pleasure. You have to have the teeth for it. Then love is like biting into an orange with the juice squirting between your teeth. And love is like letting your naked arm float in a pond with the weeds between your fingers. Like the pain with which the drunken tree groans and sings as the wild wind rides it. Our limbs as soft as plants in the wind and the weight of the collision to which you yield is like flying against a storm and her body tumbles over you like cool pebbles. When life is bad, when love is sorry, and it gets a girl through a girl through in the river.
Thank you.